Welcome to the Glassworking Shop. This is the fourth video in the series where I'm constructing a rather complex marine assembly. In this video, I'm going to be taking the triangle pieces that I made in the previous video and assembling them together into a hexagon. So, let's get going. Here's the triangle pieces that I assembled in the last video. They're reasonably correctly sized, and I probably could go ahead and just uh, squeeze them together like they are, but I'm going to size them using the squeezer because it makes them a little bit more accurate, and it also demonstrates the process of sizing with the squeezer. So, I'm using the one and one eighth squeezer dies that seem to fit the pattern correctly. I'm also going to preheat the uh, pieces in the kiln before squeezing to size. I'm also going to preheat this little piece of marine from a different project and use it to fill the hole in the center of the hexagon pattern. Here's all of the uh, Here's all of the fixed size squeezer dies. Over on the far left, I have a die with a radius on it that's used for some experiments. Then I have uh, flat dies in incrementally increasing sizes. Some very highly experimental dies in the back. And on the next shelf are the various different iris dies. And then down there are some more special purpose and somewhat experimental dies along with various different assembly fixtures. First thing I'm going to do here is go over to the kiln and get out the pieces that have been preheating. I'm going to be resizing these pieces. In the squeezer, using fixed size dies, first thing to do I need to attach some handles onto these triangle pieces. And go ahead. I'm putting the handles on with a slightly hotter than a cold seal. I don't want to get a full hot weld. I do want them to hold well enough that they don't fall off. These pieces are actually good enough that they probably 
don't really require the resizing, but I wanted to demonstrate how resizing is done on the squeezer. I don't need to pull very much of this. big enough piece. So, let me get this thing out of the way here. I'm always trying to be very careful about keeping hot things under control. Making sure that I always properly handle hot things to avoid getting burned and setting things on fire. So, let's get busy resizing here. Putting the piece in the Inquala 
the newly designed version 2 in Koala can handle a smaller diameter glass rod. It can handle a 7 millimeter color rod or a 7 millimeter handle. So I'm carefully heating in the far flame this little piece and it's almost the right shape and so resizing really isn't that necessary but I wanted to just show how resizing is done with the squeezer and of course it's always nice even if even if the piece is pretty close it's always nice to get it just a little bit better I'm a precision machinist and you can never have too much precision no matter how close it gets I always want more so The fixed size dies do an excellent job of sizing things to a precise size. And that is a pretty nice shape. The corners are a little more well-defined. The sides are a little more parallel. And overall, the pieces are just a little bit better. <coughs> After I get done resizing, I'm going to let them sit in the kiln for a little while and then cool down because I find it easier to assemble everything together when the pieces are cold and I can touch them. And then I'll assemble the triangles into a hexagon, carefully observing the pattern to make sure that the correct parts line up with the correct parts and hold it together with the stainless safety wire like I did in the first video and then squeeze the thing together into a hexagon I'm gonna be making my final sculpture is going to be a seven hexagon piece somewhat larger than I've done before using a slightly different technique I'll be trying for the for the very first time nickel plating my aluminum machined pieces using a zincate pretreatment which I've read that plating aluminum with nickel is difficult and I've read in some places that say it's not recommended don't even try it and other places say oh it's fine all you have to do is 
put a little zincate on it. So we'll see. Every time I do one of these, I try to do something a little bit different, a little bit more ambitious, go off in a slightly different direction. continue to evolve, explore, and yeah, that one's nice. Evolve and explore, and just see how far I can take this. Starting out in the far flame, even though the piece was preheated in the kiln, I want to be very careful to heat it slowly so it doesn't explode, because if I lose one of these triangles at this point, there's no way that I can successfully complete the project. Now this guy has a little bigger on the handle end. My pole was reasonably straight. I can't pull perfectly yet, but it seems like every time I do it, it gets just a little bit better. And my pole was reasonably straight, but this was a piece taken closer to the end, and not quite as uniform as I'd like it to be. This one is one that actually will really benefit from the sizing. I've done it both ways. I've done it just with the pieces as they come out of the out of the pole, just cut them up and stick them together. And then I've also spent some time resizing them. And the resizing results in a little bit better result. It's not dramatically better, but it does help a little bit. I don't know if you can see in the video here, but the uh, version 2.2 in Koala has an added set of rollers for a total of eight rollers. And this rod, this handle rod, does not extend all the way to the last roller. By putting in the extra roller up front, the Inqualla is now capable of holding very short pieces which can sometimes be a useful thing. And then let that sag a little. When pieces get off center in the Inqualla, an easy way to bring them back on center is to momentarily stop rotation with the piece with the high part up and then just let it sag back into place. Of course, now that I'm switching to handwork and I've got a, a thin little seven millimeter handle, I'm gonna get a bunch of sag anyway, but still the, the comment is valid about the procedure used to recenter a piece on the Inqualla. Boy, that's a nice, nice sharp little corners. Everything is coming along really well. Of 
course, everything is related. As I sharpen up the corners, it's going to affect the size of the hole in the center, and it may turn out that as the corners get sharper, I may need to pull down that little center guy, the little center filler, a little bit more. Sometimes I use a center filler, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just squeeze it and the glass flows into the center of a hexagon. But in this case, I kind of like the design element that that center filler is going to is going to provide, so after I get the pieces sized and put together, I may need to do a final adjustment on the the center filler piece. to get it to all fit right. Just in general in this project, or in all of my projects, I try to plan in advance as well as I can. In my machine work, everything is modeled in CAD. Every operation, every uh, CNC operation is simulated before it goes on the machine. I try to really carefully plan in advance, but in glasswork, there's only so far I can plan because I'm not quite sure, another nice one, I'm not quite sure the exact size that people, that, that uh, pieces are going to come out, the exact geometry, the exact spacing, now this one is another one that, from the other end of the pole, this one definitely needs sizing. This one is not only bigger on the far end, but it's got a little bit of twist in it. Pulling a, a large, hot, triangular piece is pretty challenging, especially for someone at my skill level and I try to keep them straight, I try to keep them uniform, I try to avoid twist, but sometimes a, a tiny bit of twist just creeps in, and the resizing operation fixes that problem along with the problem of being bigger on one end. So, And that, well, boy, the resizing has just about gotten this guy back into shape. One trick that I've found when using the squeezer, if I have an end that's too big, and the corners are kind of bulging out a little bit. Knock the corners down a little by hand on the marver, and then put it back in the squeezer. And there we go. That guy really needed resizing, and now it's as precise 
and perfect as the other five. Now I'm going to go let these guys anneal for a few minutes and let them cool down. And then turn the cameras back on again when the time comes to assemble. Well, the pieces are cut and put together with the stainless steel safety wire, and they're coming out of the kiln now, so it's time to assemble. I've pre-made all of my uh, punties and moils because it's pretty boring and you don't need to see that again. I'm going to get the piece out of the kiln and start squeezing it together. I'm using the fixed size one inch dies in a hexagon pattern and as the pattern gets squeezed I'm probably going to switch to the seven eighths. Then when the pattern is fully consolidated I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. Okay, let's get that, get the end of the pre-made moil going. And there is the piece. The first thing I'm going to do here is heat the surface of these pieces which are held together now by the stainless safety wire and I don't need to get this incredibly hot just need to get it hot enough to stick and meanwhile, getting my moil hot. I don't want to get the pattern too horribly hot because it ends up wasting some of the, the design but I do want to get the moil pretty hot, make sure that I get a good weld. So, I think we're just about ready for attachment here. Try to get it on center. Hey, that looks pretty good. So, now that, now that the piece is attached to the moil, I want to go in and weld on just the tiniest little dot of glass on each corner. to kind of hold it together when I take the safety wire off. Once again, I'm trying to be careful here to not damage very much of my pattern. These individual triangle sections are 1.2 inches long. 
my piece that I made, my triangle piece that I made yesterday, ended up being about 11 inches or so. And then I was able to get about seven and three quarters of usable, really good quality pattern out of the middle of the pull, which was, I don't remember exactly how long it was. I think it was somewhere around 10 or 11 inches long. But even though I tried my best to get a fairly small knuckle, the ends of the pattern aren't that great anyway, even if I managed to have the, the skill to have a zero size knuckle, the, the ends of the pattern aren't great. So I ended up with seven and three quarter inches of triangle material, of good quality triangle material, which was cut into 1.2 inch chunks and that's what's rotating on the Inquala right now is an assembly of 1.2 inch chunks. What I need to accomplish my pattern is about two and a half inches of material because I'm going to be making seven hexagons, each one of which will be about a quarter of an inch thick. And that's the saw cut size after it's all polished. Obviously, they'll be a little smaller, but to start off with, I cut them to size at about a quarter of an inch. So, yeah, it's not, not hot enough to fall back on center. This is a fairly large piece of glass, and it's going to take a while to build up the heat base and soak the heat into the interior, but uh, fairly soon now I'm going to give it its first squeeze just so I can kind of tag the outside edges together and have a little more confidence that the thing is going to stay together and not fall apart because right now the, the connections are not the world's most solid connections at the moment. So, for the first squeeze, all I'm trying to do is just tag the outside a little and make it a little more secure as I continue to as I continue to soak heat into it and build my heat base. Still got a a fairly neutral flame and I'm running the piece at the outer edge of the flame. I don't want to overheat the surface. A lot of the surface is star white, although not all of it is star white. There's some other colors there too. I'm probably, after it all gets consolidated and all the air gets squeezed out, I'm probably going to put another layer of star white stripes over it. But right now, the main goal of the process is to build the heat base and little bit by little bit close up some of those gaps on the uh, where the triangles meet because yeah there it goes I have to fall back on center because even though I resized the triangles fairly precisely they're, you know, it's glass and it's not totally precise. There's still a bit of a gap there. Also, I'm not 
right now I'm, I'm not doing anything to the back end of the piece, to the right side of the piece. I'm leaving all of that open so that the air has somewhere to go. Obviously it's not going to go into the moil and it's not going to go out the periphery because now that's been sealed up. So pretty much the only place left for the air to go is out the bottom. So I have to be careful to not get that glass all closed up on the bottom. And once again, this is a slow process and what I like about the Inquala, I can just stand back. My, ha my arm doesn't get tired, my hand doesn't get tired. I can go slow. I can go really slow because glass is an insulator. It takes a really long time to soak that heat down into the core and get the core to start to condense down and close up all those gaps and when I can just let the machine do the work and kind of enjoy the show there's less of a tendency to rush and overheat which is something that a bad habit that I used to have when I started and I was doing handwork. You see how I stopped it, took it out of the flame, stopped it for a moment and let it fall back on center. It's very important on the Inquala to keep your piece under control, keep your piece on center, because if you let it fall off center, if you get the piece too hot and too floppy, and you let it fall off center, it will go bad before you have a chance to push the stop button. That's something that new users of the Inquala need to learn. I've seen very experienced glass workers the first time they ever touch an Inquala they let the piece get way too hot and then all of a sudden it just collapses and they end up with a big mess and there's no way to recover. So now, starting to build the heat base. Starting to, oh that pattern is starting to look really good. Got my corners looking good, my corners are looking pretty crisp. Every time I squeeze, the piece gets a little smaller in diameter and a little bit longer. I may end up being able to accomplish my goal of getting enough usable material just with squeezing, but I'm actually expecting that I'll be doing some pulling as well. Now, as I'm reducing the size of this thing on the squeezer, I need to start worrying about the corners. Well, actually not worrying, just paying attention to the corners. And a strategy that works really well for keeping the corners under control is to go over here by hand on the marver and just kind of knock them down a little because I don't want them kind of oozing through the space in the squeezer dies. I want them to be precise and nice and sharp once the piece is squeezed to its final size, but 
in this case, at this point in the process, the piece is a little bigger than the dies, and the dies don't close fully down to zero. And so there's a, a tiny little gap in the dies when they've reached the furthest point that they can squeeze. And I don't want glass flowing into that little gap. So, we are we're getting, getting pretty close here. Just to review some of the numbers and the amount of material that it takes to make one of these designs, I started with about a two and three quarter inch long rod stack and then layered onto that three layers, striped on layers of glass and in the process of rounding it out and striping and rounding and striping the piece grew until it was about three and a quarter three and a half long i then after it was completely finished and nice and round i pulled it out to about six inches long and about an inch in diameter out of that six inches the there were knuckles there was part of the pattern that wasn't quite as nice as I would have liked it. And I managed to get about three and a half inches of high quality center core material. I then heated up that three and a half inches of the one inch diameter core material, put it in the squeezer, put the, uh, the channels in it, the lobes in it, added the rest of the assemblies, squeezed and pulled and pulled it down to a triangle approximately 11 inches long or so I didn't actually measure it and about an inch and an eighth on a side of the triangle then after it was annealed and after it was cooled I cut the center out of it the sweet spot the good stuff and got six pieces 1.2 inches long each and it's those pieces that I'm assembling together today and squeezing down. And like I said, the goal of this process is to come up with seven pieces a quarter inch thick. And in order to do that, I'm going to need about two and a half inches of usable material. which means that my piece needs to be probably three and a half inches or so to guarantee that I get enough usable material in the center to accomplish the thing that I'm going to accomplish. Okay, so at this point I have now bottomed out, and let's get that guy back on center again. I have now bottomed out the inch and an eighth dies, so I'm going to put on my hot glove because those dies have just been touching hot glass. And it would be pretty stupid to go and grab them with a bare hand. So now I'm going to switch to the 7 8 dies. And the 7 8 dies will take the piece down to its final squeeze. And after the final squeeze, with seven-eighths dies. I'll put the other the other punty, the, the moil and the puller on the other end 
and finish the pull. I don't exactly know what size my piece will come out to be, what dimension, and that's why I'm waiting until the glass is finished before before I start work on the metal parts. So, Continuing to try to soak some heat into the core of this thing. Every time it goes in the squeezer, it cools the outside of the glass a little bit. And this allows the core heat to be increased without excessively overheating the outer layers. So I do notice something odd that's happening here, kind of unexpected. I am getting a, a tiny amount of distortion, which is kind of a surprise because the the fixed size dies typically squeeze without distortion, so I'm a, a little bit surprised how this happened. But so much of this process is all R&D. And I've only done a few of these. Some were successful, some were not that successful. It's a bit of a mystery here why the pattern is sliding around. I'm going to have to I'm have to think about that a little. Try to understand what's going on. But who knows? probably still be a usable piece. Now, here's another case of lack of preparation. I'm going to be covering the outside with, yeah, maybe I'm okay. Maybe I am okay. Maybe, maybe I'll just switch to position mode. I was going to pull down the, the white rod to make it a little bit smaller so it would end up with a thinner with a thinner overall stripe but I'm thinking I'll be just fine with a full size rod and a full size stripe just putting a, a layer of star white on the outside I'm still undecided, but there's a possibility that I may go over on the, the lap wheel. I just finished a, a precision indexing head for precisely holding pieces that has like the ability to do indexing for four or six or three different sides and I may go 
on the lap wheel with the precision index and grind this guy down to a more precise shape kind of all depends on how good it comes out after the final squeeze and after the pull the squeezer produces fairly excellent geometry not perfect but fairly excellent but once the piece is pulled the pulling itself introduces some oddness so Like I said, everything about this is R&D. Which, of course, is what makes it exciting. What makes it so much fun is not knowing what's going to happen. So, continuing the application of the outer stripe, another thing that will drive the decision on whether or not to grind it is if this layer ends up looking too thick and if it looks out of balance if it looks insanely thick I'll take it down just for that reason of course I have no idea where that distortion came from because it was squeezing so perfectly with the with the corners right out the corners and then something happened probably going to need another color rod here. Make sure that everything stays nice and hot I'm not not getting it too cold and here comes That is the last stripe. So, back to rotation mode, back to fire. Lock off the twist axis. The ability to lock off the twist axis was not included in the first version 
and then it was added in version 2.2 and it's turned out to be a a really really useful thing that I probably should have thought of when I was designing the original circuit but you know that's that's the way product development goes so now just kind of stand back watch the show the end still looks fairly cold of course while I was doing all the striping I was losing some of my core heat so gotta kinda build that back got to periodically check my camera on the squeezer because it has some very annoying behavior it's it's a still camera that does video it's not a dedicated video camera and kind of turns itself off after a while very short while so I gotta gotta be paying attention. There's so many things to pay attention to here. Doing the glasswork, keeping the moil hot. Thinking about the next step in the process. Making sure all my cameras are still running, making sure that they all have enough juice in their batteries But so far, things seem to be going reasonably well. Assuming that nothing catastrophically fails, I'm thinking that I may have a usable piece when this is over. Of course, the, the wood and metal, I'm a lot more experienced woodworker and metal worker than I am a glass worker, and the wood and metal parts are pretty much guaranteed to work. There's just about no chance of failure on that. But the glass, you know, it's always... It's always a mystery. Is it going to work? What's it going to look like? Is it going to rock or is it going to suck? Looks like the, the outer layer is getting nice and smooth and uniform don't see any boiling problems I think I've got a successful layer going here I'm also when I'm rotating by hand using a bit of gravity because at the moment 
I kind of want the piece to be a little longer. Oh yeah, we are getting there. We're reaching the end of what I can do with squeezing. And I have my other side puller with a big moil on it in the kiln, ready to jump into action. That is very close to the It's very close to about the best I can do with squeezing. Before I have to start pulling, And of course, as you can see, the piece is growing. Getting longer, getting thinner. And hopefully, free of air on the inside. So that is about as far as it's going to go. In the squeezer. So I get my pre-made hexagonal puller moil here out of the kiln. When I made this ahead of time, I made it just the littlest bit too big. So it's hard to anticipate in advance precisely the size that everything's going to end up. So it's looking pretty good. So now I need to get the end of the puller ripping hot. Get the end of the piece hot enough. I don't want to get it too horribly hot. I want it to be hot enough to stick. Ended up generating a bit of a divot in the end of the puller, which I don't want.
And yes, the radiant heat is starting to get pretty nasty in the, in the glassworking shop here. Hopefully my chrome jacket will arrive. I think it's scheduled to come here tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, hot stuff working in the glass working shop on a 90 degree day. But that's okay. I don't mind. I like hot. So, get the Inquala out of the way here. Pulling is hard enough. I'm still not a master puller yet. It's hard enough on a round piece, but when you start getting a triangle or a hexagon, you got to really watch out for twist. I'm concentrating the heat on the ends because the center section just on its own, just the nature of glass, the center section tends to get hotter. And if I don't pay attention, I end up with the center way too thin and the ends way too big. Trying to maintain a perfect hexagonal geometry during the pull is not even close to easy. Especially at my current skill level. Hopefully with any luck, as I get better at this, It'll be a little easier, but at the moment, this is always the somewhat, not quite terrifying, but the part of the process that I'm always a little uncertain about, about how it's going to come out. So, it's looking very much like I'm going to have my two and a half inches of usable material. And of course, I got her a little thinner there than I'd like it to be. It's 
still just barely under control. Of course, if if I need to, I can always resize it a tiny bit with the squeezer. It's looking very much like I'm going to have success here in the pull. Yes, I believe that is, that is going to be good enough. I am just not going to worry about this anymore. Make sure that nothing is getting cold. if I can get this guy cut off with the diamond shears. That is that, more or less uniform, not perfect yet, but I'm going to put that guy in the kiln, turn off the torch. Actually, I'm not going to turn off the torch. I'm going to clean up the end of that punty a little bit. I punty and moil and get it ready for the next project. So nothing really interesting to see here. Thank you for watching. It's been fun. I love this stuff. <laughs>